We're starting something new, and this is going to be the best series ever, hashtag. Like, you're going to love this series. You know why? Because it's all about you. <laughs> I know. Some of you were just born for this. It's because it's all about you, all right? So we are going to talk about your identity. You have this picture of yourself in your head of what you look like or what you think you look like or what you want to look like. So I've got a picture of me and Deb when we were pretty young, all right? Deb, there we go. You can tell what year it was, I know. that I proved that, I, that really is me, all right? See? <laughs> hey, I don't care what you say, I was cool with my little seashells. A chameleon, well, <laughs> that was at summer camp. I believe we were at World Changers working on a roof all week. Uh, and um, I think that was when we went to Texas, believe it or not. And so we were working on a roof all week. And so Deb still looks good. I looked way better back then. I was skinny. Uh, I've been six foot four. And in that picture, I was 175 pounds. I've been that way since junior high. So um, I, this is how I picture myself a lot of times. This is what I want to remember myself as. This young youth pastor that had tons of energy. I remember on this trip, we would actually go play ultimate Frisbee on our day off after re-roofing a house all day. Or we would actually, believe it or not, um, me and several of the students, we would go out for a run early in the mornings just because they were super athletic. So before the mission project, before camp started, we would just go out for a run in the community. I was really dumb. Uh, I'll just be honest, that's not gonna happen right now. So if any of you wanna go for a run before camp this year, um, I'm gonna tell you to talk to Jack Fink, uh, talk to Luke Schauble. Um, Those guys will be happy to run with you. Uh, Pastor Mark, no, I won't be. All right, so this is how I wanna remember myself. We have this picture of what we look like and we think, wow, we look good. So some of you, There's this next photo. This is ultimately what you think you look like, all right? Man, and I'll be honest, like most of you have seen this guy before, and I'm telling you what, if you were to see this, you would think life has been hard on this man, all right? You could just tell that he's been out in the sun a lot. Like you could just tell, he looks like he has like triplets, like his, the bags under his eyes, he has no sleep, he's got rough looking skin. Like you could just, he's probably a hard, hard worker. And for some of you, this is the picture of what you see yourself as. But you ladies, this is your post on social media, <laughs> all right? You think I'm kidding, but you use that filter and you fix everything and that's how you post your photos, all right? And you know why you're laughing and why all the guys are laughing? Because they know it's true. (laughs) They've seen your Instagram, all right? So here's what we're gonna talk about. For some of you, this top photo up here Your identity, you think, and you know life is hard. For some of you, maybe your parents are not getting along. For maybe some of you, you look at everyone else's social media and you think their life is perfect and mine is not. For some of you, you start to have really, really big questions. Is my life worth it? Why is my life not like everyone else's life? You start having questions about identity. For maybe some of you, you just are frustrated with school. Why can't you grasp concepts like other people? Why can't you pick up this class as well as others? Our search for identity starts leading to other questions. And what we're going to talk about over the next several weeks is your identity. You spend a lot, we spend a lot of time trying trying to create something that is perfect. For some of you, you take this top photo and you spend five, 15, 20 minutes on this bottom photo, making sure Instagram is filtered and it looks perfect. You make sure that the caption is just right. 
before you start and you go and post it. You spend a lot of time trying to create and establish your identity. For maybe some of you, the way that they see you at school and the way they see you at church is two different things. And they don't line up because you've spent a lot of time being really careful how you act at church versus how you act at school. Your identity is really, really important. So that's what we're gonna look at. If I was to ask you, how does God feel about you? Really, how does God feel about you? How does God feel about you for what the Bible says versus what you live out on a daily basis may be two different things. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this one letter and we're gonna look at how God views you. And for some of you, you may have this idea of who God says you are and you may know it, but there's a difference of how you start living it out. Because when you start living it out, it changes the way that you walk, it changes the way that you take steps. When you know who God says you are, you start walking differently. You start walking maybe with your head held high instead of trying to hide who you are because you don't want people to know what you're really struggling with. So if you've got your Bibles, we're gonna look at Ephesians 1, all right? So if you've got your Bibles, you've got your phone app, go to Ephesians 1. So Paul writes this letter to the church And sometimes we think that he writes it to the specific, I'm hearing a lot of talking on this side, okay? So sometimes we think that Paul is writing to the specific church, but ultimately this letter is written to all the different churches and it represents you and I. It's not just for this one particular church, but it applies to all of us, okay? So Paul writes this after missionary journeys. He took several different missionary journeys and he writes this letter to this church after he establishes this church and he wants to follow when he checks up on him, okay? And so here's what he says in Ephesians 1, chapter one. And here's why this is important. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to all the saints who are in Ephesus, you are faithful in Christ Jesus, So this is a really important verse and this is how he starts his letter. Like, have you ever gone to a movie and the opening scene of the movie just grabbed your attention? Have you ever been to a movie where the first scene is really, really boring? Yes, and you're like, this is not gonna be a great hour. For me, that movie was Napoleon Dynamite. (laughs) Yeah, that, that is an hour and a half of my life I will never get back, okay? Sorry, it's just the way I feel. It's just boring, all right? Like, never mind, I'll keep it to myself. All right, so here's the thing. Paul writes this letter, and it's not about him. And so Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. So Paul, if you know anything about Paul, Paul persecuted Christians. He terrorized them. He made fun of them. And for some of you, maybe you're walking down the hallway and you avoid a certain hallway because you know the bully's there. Or maybe you are the bully and you have kids that avoid you. Paul is saying that what happens is the reason why I'm a follower of Jesus is because of what God did in my life. Because Paul at one point persecuted the Christians and they wanted nothing to do with him. So he is reminding people it's because of what God did, not because of anything exceptional that I did. So Paul says to the saints who are at Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Students, I want to remind you that here's what saints mean. Saints mean holy, they're set apart. God has set you apart. There are some things that you are called to be set apart, to be different. If I was to look at a saint, they're supposed to look and act different than everyone else. Do your teachers know that you're a follower of Jesus because you act differently in class than all the other kids that are not? And then the next thing he says, he says faithful. Students, I wanna remind you that being consistent in whatever you do 
is important. And, and Paul says this to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful. Whatever it is that you do for Jesus, we're called to be faithful, to be consistent, to show up, to be regular, all right? Your being consistent matters. People see it. And that's how Paul opens his letters. He's like encouraging them. He's saying, hey, for all of you, I'm writing to you because God's done something in my life. You are faithful and you are saints. You are set apart. And this is what he starts to tell them. In Ephesians 1, 3, I think it's a pop up on the screen here for you. Blessed be God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. All right, it's an important verse and here's why. Imagine you win the lotto. This is a dream of mine, I'll be honest. So I've made these deals with all of my friends. I'm like, hey, if you win the lotto, split it with me. And if I win the lotto, I'll split it with you. There's one important detail I live out, or I'll leave out. Guess what it is? <laughs> I don't play the lotto. <laughs> they didn't ask that question. I just want to know if they win, they split it with me. Sorry, I didn't win. I'm smart, right? So here's the deal. If you win $100 million, do you get all $100 million? No. Who takes the other, some of it? The government, right? Uncle Sam. He takes his collection. Now, on a show of hands, if you win $100 million, how many of you want the payout per year? Raise your hand. If you want, so let me explain. I forgot. <laughs> know your audience, right? All right. So you have two options. You can take a payout every year for a certain amount of money and you get a little bit more. Or you can choose to tag one payout and the government will take all their money and they give you a check. So if you win $100 million, let's say the government takes their half and you may get $55 million all at one time. How many of you would choose the yearly payouts and get a little bit more? <laughs> okay, pretty good. Now, how many of you would take the one-time payout? All right, pretty interesting. <laughs> the ones, yeah. Mr. Netherton's back there. He's like, I'll, yeah, I'll take. I'll take the payout. So I'll be honest with you. In my lifetime, I've met one gentleman who's won the lotto. And he never told us how much, but I'm pretty sure it was somewhere in the realm of 30 to $50 million. All right? He was awesome. He had so much fun. We had so much fun with this gentleman. All right? He was so nice. And he treated me awesome because we weren't trying to take advantage of him. I didn't know he won the lotto. We would just like to hang out with him. And then when I found out he won the lotto, I'm like, oh, that's why it makes sense why you have 400 trikes in your garage and a, uh, a Mustang Saline sitting on blocks and you have an incredible house and a boat and houses. All so it was great. So here's the deal. This verse, here's what this means. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. God is not holding out on you. He is not saying, I'm giving you everything, but I'm gonna take something back. The Bible says that he has given you everything. And this is important, students. And the reason why it's important is because when we know that we've won the lotto, we know that we're not getting it all. Like, oh, I wish I just had everything. The Bible says we kind of won the lotto when Jesus died for us and he's giving us everything. Here's why it makes a difference. It makes a difference because of Ephesians 1.4. And this is what it says. Even as he chose us in him. See, we can stop right there. I mean, think about it. Have you ever been picked last for a sporting event? I have. It's called soccer. I am slow as molasses. I cannot, even when, in that photo, I like to think I'm fast and I look skinny, but I am the same speed now fat as I was skinny, okay? I kid you not. See, what happens is God in this verse says he chose you. I, I don't know about you, but I always joke. And like, have you ever played Simon Says? And you're like, Man, if you can follow rules, that's who I want on my team. If you can't follow rules, I don't want you on my team. 
right? What God is saying here is he's saying, hey, he knows, he knows you. The Bible tells us that he knew you before you were even in the womb. And this verse tells us that he chooses you. He chose you. In all of your dysfunction, in all of my dysfunction, in all of my mess ups, the Bible says that God chose you because he knows you. And the reason why that matters is this, because it says that you're loved, you're chosen, you're holy, he sees you without fault, and you're part of God's family. And that changes the way that you live your life. When you see your identity through what the Bible says instead of through what your friends say. Because your friends, whether they tell you or not, are saying that you only matter if you've got something that benefits me. Because I'll be honest, if you look at other people's social media and you get left out of going to a party and you weren't invited, you get really disappointed. Why wasn't I invited? And you think your identity is wrapped up in that because your friends didn't invite you. Maybe your identity you think comes from what your parents say about you. It doesn't. It comes from what God says who you are and whose you are. Have you ever seen those photos? And this is, we'll just stay right on course to adopt a dog and it's got like in the arms of angels playing in the background. And you see these dogs that are just not fed. Who actually wants to run out and adopt this dog with two legs that has no kidneys, that has no teeth? It's water bowl has to be lifted. Like it's gonna cost you thousands and you can't just feed, like someone is going to the grocery store and buying the food from the separate refrigerators just for dogs. There's four of you, okay? <laughs> like, I'll be honest. When Deb and I were looking at adopting a dog, the adoption agency would always call us and say, hey, we've got this dog. It's got one leg. No, no. I do not want a dog with one leg, one eye, one functioning kidney, no teeth, and goes by the name Lucky. <laughs> I don't want that dog. I want a dog that has no issues. I don't want to hold the plate up to the dog. I mean, it's just, last night, our dog was walking around like he's going to throw up. I did what every normal human being would do. Your butt's going to stay outside or your butt's going in the crate. That's your option. Your option is not to roam my house and <laughs> throw up on my floor right? No one chooses that. Guys, this verse says God chose you. He chooses you. He chose you. Ephesians 1.5. Or 4. Even after he chose us before the foundation of the world that he should be holy and blameless before him in love, he predestined us for adoptions as sons through Christ Jesus according to the purpose of his will. You are not what others say about you. So let me tell you this, students. Your brain is wired to make a connection when you hear something over and over again. You make that connection of that's really what you are. And that's false. It's false. If you are constantly told and, and you hear what you're not, your brain will start thinking, I, I really don't matter. And if your friends are the ones speaking in your ear constantly, you'll start thinking, my life, I, I, I'm just not that important. And that's not true. So here's what I want you to talk about in small groups tonight. Whose identity are you looking at? Is it yours or is it someone else's? Who is defining whose you are and how are you living? For those that went to camp last year, last year, this year, he talked about the shoes that you put on. When you put on new shoes, you walk a little bit differently, right? Yeah, remember? And for some of you, if your identity is found in Christ and you're confident in that, 
It changes the way that you act and you talk and you present yourself. As the band comes up, let me pray. And after the band is done uh, leading us in worship one last time, you guys are gonna be dismissed to your small groups. But ultimately, guys, it's who's your identity in? Is it found in your friends or do you find it in who Jesus says you are? Because he chose you. It matters that he chooses you. Let me pray. Father, thank you for this time that we're able to gather together and study your word. Father, it matters that you chose us. That you, even in all the dysfunction and the mess up of you knowing how, who, or what we'd struggle with, that you still chose us. Father, I thank you for choosing us. And Father, for anyone in this room that is struggling with whose they are, I pray that you'd help them. For those students that are disconnected tonight, that are just talking, Father, I pray that you convict them because their identity matters of whose they are. It affects the way that they live their life. Father, I pray for all of us in this room that you'd help us not to see what other people tell us what we are or whose we are, but you'd be, that we would be defined by scripture. We pray all these things in your name. Amen.